Hi, my friend, I'm Pat Sloan, and you are here on this video because either you have a spot on your nose that you're not you know, sure what it is, you already know you have basal cell carcinoma that you have to go through surgery to remove, or a friend or a family member has it and you're trying to do some research. This is where I was back in about the late summer of 2021 when I decided that the sort of progression of what was on my nose needed to have a closer, much closer and new look. Um, what I had uh, was basal cell carcinoma, which is luckily uh, a very, uh, good cancer to have because it does not spread like others, it doesn't go to other parts of your body, and it's extraordinarily slow growing. The thing is there are multiple types of it. So there's not just one which the doctors told me is called like what you see is what you get. You see a spot somewhere, they remove it, stitch a little up, you're out of the office. Uh, I had a different version of that, one that at the surface might be very small, but underneath has tendrils that go and uh, weave their way in different places. And all of those little tendrils have to be removed. And that's a much more complex uh, process, but one that they have lots and lots of experience with. So I just wanna give you a few things. I wanna talk about you know what I had, um, what, you know, when did it start? What was the progression? What did it look like as the couple pictures that I have to show you? What was I worried about prior? Because that's why I'm doing this video. I couldn't get the exact answers I was looking for prior to the surgery. What happened during the surgery? What were the things that I didn't expect or were maybe, you know, what, what went on? And then sort of lessons learned afterwards. Uh, as you're seeing me now, I am two and a half months after the surgery. I do wear glasses all the time, but I will put my, my schnoz up here for you to see. There is what it looks like. That will eventually go down. And I'll, I'll give you a little bit more on that in a minute. Okay, so I started um, with something on my nose, something that made me think I needed to have it checked uh, in about 2017. And the reason why is because I have some large moles that are kind of odd shaped and there were used to be two of them. <laughs> <laughs> and the doctors always look at those and go like, ah, we, you know, what is that? I mean, I've literally had them all my life. One of them eventually I had removed, it was not cancer. But there was something on my nose and I actually can't remember what it looked like, but I think it was maybe a sore that wasn't going away, which I wasn't comprehending at the time. So I saw a dermatologist uh, and at the time they did not do a biopsy. Uh, the dermatologist said, uh, well, let's, give you this cream that will basically go through, it looks like a precancer. This, it'll, it'll sort of kill off a layer of skin, which will kill off the layer of precancer, which would be the kind that were kind of on the surface. What you see is what you get. Well, she didn't say I needed to do this. And I was doing a lot of travel and it was going to be sort of an icky process. And so I didn't do it right away. So back and then about <clears throat> 2019, I decided that there seemed to be a little bit more going on. And so then I went ahead and did that procedure where you can see here, I'm putting some pictures up as I go, but that procedure, you know, basically killed off a whole layer of skin on the top of my nose. And so I was fine. That was 2019 in the summer because I wasn't doing any traveling for about six weeks. And that's what, when I did it. Um, <clears throat> Fast forward then, not very far to the summer of 2020. Our lovely pandemic was in full bloom and I fell and broke both my wrists. Uh, so this is what I looked like then. So I had to go through uh, surgery, you know, pins and plates in my wrists and you know, this, uh, this whole experience. And during that time, I wasn't really looking at my skin that closely. But about the beginning of 2021, I kept looking at my nose thinking, you know, that's just a weird spot. That looks like a scar. Like, and there shouldn't be any scar on the side of my nose. Uh, <clears throat> and that thought just kept percolating in there because we're in a pandemic and uh, we still have no vaccines. So I'm not going to the doctor unless I really need to. 
and I'd already been to the doctor a ton for two broken wrists. So finally, late summer of 2021, um, I thought, you know, I've just, I just need to have this checked because uh, it doesn't look right. So I went in and the derm this is a different dermatologist now, uh, and she basically looked at it and said, yep, we, that's something, we are gonna do a biopsy. So she did a biopsy, which by the way, does uh, hurts to get the needle put in. That they have, some of them seem to do that needle a little better on your nose, but your nose is pretty sensitive. Uh, so that was the part hurt like, and I didn't know that was gonna hurt, <laughs> but it doesn't hurt for very long. So they removed and took the, the biopsy, and I think the next day, I had the report that it was basal cell carcinoma. And so then a whole series of conversations started happening with my doctors, uh, and this was all very good. Um, but what I needed was some other specific things I wanted to know. Um, and I went around searching on the internet to try to find somebody who shared their experience like I'm doing with you today. Somebody who said what they went through, what it looked like, what happened, you know, where, where did, you know, what did it end up? I ended up on Mel's Kitchen, and this was, <clears throat> at the time she'd written her article was in 2016, and she pretty much had very similar to what I ended up having. So as I read her article, and the link is in the description box below, I was so appreciative of her sharing that. And she also um, had an experiences that were a little bit different than mine because she did not go, in, go into her um, doctor's office really understanding what was going to happen. She didn't know she was going to have this much work done going in. And she even had to drive herself home, which was not allowed for me at all. I could not drive myself home. Um, but read that. She also has uh, some click through pictures to see the super big hole in the side of her nose, which is pretty much what mine looked like as well. Because I don't have a picture. Because as I'll tell you soon, I didn't take my phone with me that day. <laughs> so what are the things that I were, was concerned about? Um, one is because when you go on the internet and look for this, you find often the worst case stuff. All the really um, extreme cases. The, and really for me, it was like they couldn't tell me until I, they started the surgery to really know how, where all these little tendrils were and how deep they were and how they spread. So they don't know till they go in and do the surgery. The surgery is called Mohs, M-O-H-S, which was designed by a Dr. Mohs. Uh, and is very, very successful. And what it's doing is taking layers of um, skin off to get the cells until they get to a layer that it's clean. And that's what um, Mel had as well, and lots of you have had, um, and will have. <laughs> So I knew that was part of it because I had a Mohs doctor and then I had a plastic surgeon. Why did I have a plastic surgeon? Well, these were some of the questions I wanted to understand. You know, they knew already that now that I've had this done, they knew already that the hole was going to be big enough that it was going to need some major surgery to cover it up. It wasn't like they put two stitches in there and send you home. It was a big hole. I was going to have to have real surgery to, to fix this up. So as I was in the process, I had appointments. I don't have appointments with the Mohs doctors, but I did um, have the nurses and I talked to them. And then I was uh, scheduled an appointment with a plastic surgeon. So I went in to see Dr. Meltzner and he um, basically sat me down and explained exactly what would happen. <clears throat> um, he doesn't remove it, he just fixes it. So based on what he knew and what he saw um, or you know, assumed what was going to be happening, he told me that pretty much he would be taking a piece of skin from here, like right here under my eye, and that would be like pulled over and cover the hole. So he would be stretching it over, kind of like loosening it and pulling it over and covering the hole in the side of my nose. He says, if the hole is too big, then they have to pull from my forehead. It says some people will pull from the ear, but he goes, he doesn't do that. This isn't that type. Um, so, okay. Now the interesting part <clears throat> is that when I told family and friends I was going to have this done, 
because I had to wait several weeks to coordinate between two doctors so I could have it in the same day. Note, big note, if you're having this done, you may have to go back the second day to have the hole closed up. Sometimes it can't be scheduled in the same day. I went two days before Thanksgiving, and so they were able to do me all in one day. Um, but the interesting thing I, I discovered is that when you tell family and friends, all of them have had the what you see is what you get. So they have had just a little thing taken off, even if it was on their nose, just a little thing taken off, and they haven't had what I had. Even one friend told me like afterwards, she goes, she was shocked to see my after picture because she'd only known people who had had the small ones. I think a lot of people when they have this larger surgery and your face is all stretched up and you look like Frankenstein, you just pretty much stay to yourself. <laughs> you know, you don't go out until it sort of heals up enough that people don't know that you had these huge stitches all up your face. Um, <clears throat> so it's kind of hard to, uh, you know, you're, you're, I mean, you're waiting like these five or six weeks I was waiting and everybody was telling me this, 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 but my surgeon told me something different. And in the end, I realized the surgeon knew what he was talking about <laughs> and really what he said was what was going to happen and what did happen. So the other things that concerned me the day of surgery was like, how long did I have to wait in between at each layer as the, as the Mohs doctor took it off to go and biopsy it and do the mapping so that they could go to the next layer, you know, uh, in the lab? you know, how long was that wait? I had forgotten to ask. So I asked the nurse when I went in there and she said, it's generally about an hour between each layer. Now I thought I'd have to go sit out in the weight room, but no, I was given my own little space and that was good. Um, the other thing is because I was having two surgeries with anesthesia, some level of anesthesia on the second one, I could not eat any of that day of the surgery and I couldn't drink water after like 10 a.m. So this was a big concern for me. Like, I was I gonna starve to death? I couldn't have any water. You know, I was gonna have a coughing fit. And then, and then am I, am I, how far out am I gonna be? You know, like all these things. I had been told by a nurse that I would be out and I'd been told by the surgeon I would be awake. So I really didn't know where I would be. <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was all rolling, rolling, rolling up to the day. The day goes, as much as it's a long freaking day, it does seem to go fairly quickly. My biggest mistake of the day, just to let you know, was if they, you know, take your phone because there is downtime. The only time I'd ever been in for this kind of a thing was two broken wrists and everything went so fast, I couldn't hold a phone anyways. And so in my brain, I'm like, I, I don't wanna have to deal with that phone being put somewhere secure and I can't use it anyway. You know, my brain was thinking on a different level. I could have used my phone. Instead, I took a book to read and, you know, basically just tried to stay chill <laughs> as I went along. So the day of surgery, I did have to go two levels of Mohs. And what I want you to know is that you are given a local, she numbs your, their, your doctor will numb your nose and God knows what else up there. Uh, so you don't feel anything, but you do hear it. So uh, be aware of that. Whether you wanna know that in advance or not, I'm sorry, but I, I kinda wish I had known. But as it's happening, you're there, you can't change. It goes fairly quickly. Her procedure is fairly quick. It's not like you're an hour there and you know, it's pretty, pretty fast. The nursing team was amazing. They put music on, so I had music playing. Um, and we did the first one that I had to wait about an hour. Then, then they came back to prep me again. They go, okay, we gotta do another one. And then it was less than an hour that they could, I guess, get to a level of that it was fine. At that point, I got a big bandage on my nose and then I have to walk myself up to the nether, another floor for the second surgery. And this one, uh, the anesthesia part of it, um, I'll talk about in a second, but basically I had to wait about an hour after I was all prepped, everything was prepped, and then I just had to sit and wait because the surgeon was actually in surgery doing some other work. So um, he, didn't, uh, he didn't get there uh, for, you know, my turn wasn't for a little bit. But when he did come in, what he did was he took a marker, and I'll show you here, this is the after where you can see the drawing, but he took a marker and basically was drawing on my face with this marker. This side had a big hole in it, you know, like the big hole was about right there. Um, and he, he told me, he says, I'm, 
lucky that it was just just short enough from the here. Like if it had been a little further down towards my nostril, he would have had to go from my forehead, but he was able to go from my cheek. So then I was told like I would be sort of awake so he could talk to me and chat with me. And I'm like thinking, I don't really want to be awake. <laughs> I don't really want to chat while this is going on, but <laughs> There you go, this is how it works. The reason they do that, they explained, is because if you don't go fully under, then your recovery time is much faster, so you're there less time, and you get to go home sooner. Um, so what happened was I really didn't know the first part. It wasn't until he was starting to stitch it up that um, I could then recognize he was, hear him talking to me and talking with, uh, he had another, um, a doctor there at the same time who I think was uh, observing or training. Um, so they were talking and then they would talk to me and I did talk to them a little bit. But it was really mm, towards the end uh, of it. So that was um, all of the stuff that was going on. Now I did have a funny thing. I have to tell you a funny thing because as I'm waiting, because I'm, you know, I'm not supposed to have had any water since 10 a.m. and now it's about two in the afternoon. And one of the nurses came in to check on me and she, I will call it, she pulled a World War II GI, GI tactic on me because what she said was, what'd you have for breakfast? And I looked at her, I'm like, I'm not supposed to eat breakfast. I didn't eat breakfast. <laughs> and so she laughed and I said, what are you doing? I said, you're pulling, you're pulling stuff over on me. You're trying to catch me in the lie. And she goes, yep, because <laughs> you can't have anything to eat. So what happened afterwards? You know, I had asked him, would my eye swell? He goes, oh yeah, your eye will swell. Lots and lots of friends had told me, oh, my eye didn't swell, I had this and that. It's like, well, when the doctor tells you your eye will swell, he will be doing surgery here. He knows what he's talking about. So here's some pictures of the progression of swelling. Um, you can have swelling all down into your neck. I did have swelling all, because this was down into the it's all in the crease my smile line so it's all the way down to this almost to my lip uh, so all of that was um, you know tra very traumatized <laughs> so there was swelling down here there was swelling up here and swelling would move around um, but after a few you know after about two weeks a lot of that really really reduced so about two weeks you're probably um, for me, I look like the Bride of Frankenstein, uh, and uh, then it slowly, slowly kind of uh, fixed itself up. Um, I went in one week after surgery to have the stitches removed. Well, I was like, wow, my wrist was forever before we removed stitches. Apparently that's not normal. My wrists were not normal, but I didn't know. I never had stitches before. So I was surprised they came out that fast. Now at um, two and a half months, I can see like it is healing up a little bit. There's a couple of spots where, you know, it is actually like a little, little section, maybe a quarter of an inch that looks like, whoa, it looks like it, the, the whole scar is gone. Um, but that will eventually go over time. No sun. Uh, I bought sun hats, uh, SPF 50 sun hats, you know, that have uh, SPF 50 in the fabric so that I'm wearing those. And I've always been wearing sunscreen except for, of course, when I was a kid, which is when all of this stuff gets generated. Uh, so if you have kids, be sure you're putting sunscreen on them. See, so was there anything else? Ah, uh, you know, everything about this, the scariest part was before I went in because really the scariest part was like, how big would this thing be? And how much reconstruction surgery would it be? There was very little pain. There was very little pain afterwards. I t maybe took a Tylenol, you know, but mostly I didn't take anything. Um, it's, you know, it just sort of start, you know, your body heals very quickly. So now I just uh, take care of it um, normally and keep the sun off of it and uh, it will eventually the redness will go down and the the little bumps in the sweat it's still swollen the side of my nose is still swollen your nose will feel hard as a rock uh, and then even, like your nostrils will feel hard as a rock you can't blow your nose for a while um, and you know all those things but they eventually start to soften up and it's it's getting there now which is nice well I 
hope that this helped you a little bit. It's something I wanted to do because it's something I was looking for myself. Um, and if it helps you, uh, if you have someone you can share it with, I'm more than happy that you do that. So I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. I love you. Mwah. See you online.